All right. Can everybody hear me? Yes. All right. This is called the Brass Pony Bar. All the dedicated drinkers had their schedules and reasons for them. Most punch in as if another one of their dead end jobs. I worked third shift Monday, Wednesday, Friday, which left Saturday and Sunday night for drinking with old friends, and Tuesday and Thursday night for making new ones. At the Pony, if you showed up before seven, you could buy a plastic mug filled with Bud for five and fill it for a dollar until close. Plus, you got to bring the mug home, fill it with coffee or another beer the next day. And the clientele, the camaraderie, the conversation. I'd drink until I could stomach talk about horse racing or discuss the quality of an old man's new tattoo, a grenade across his chest, the pin pulled, overlaid with his girlfriend's nickname in calligraphy, La Russe. There was a touchscreen bar game where men or women, if they ever showed up and felt the urge, could try and tell the difference between two similar pictures, like in Highlights Magazine for Kids, except the picture was always a topless woman. The bartender who worked weekends was a pro. This one's nipple is lower. Those panties are orange. She has a few teeth missing. Look at the curve of her nose. Even if I made a scene occasionally, showed up every night when work got slow, I'd be a model citizen in comparison. I wouldn't be the asshole who smashed open the cigarette machine even though it had been empty for years. Or the guy who locked himself in the bathroom and passed out so the cops had to come and take the door down. Or the shithead who shattered the front plate glass window with a pool ball, shutting the place down two weeks, police tape draped limp across the gaping hole. At worst, I was the quiet one. Didn't start trouble. Never waited outside after clothes asking for a ride. At best, I was just one of the regulars. Another guy waiting out the winter in a shitty town at a shitty bar with a bunch of bricks having one long drink. <laughs> Woo!